So the patch has finally come out, and also a few more hot fixes have come out shortly after that. So I wanted to kind of go through some of these. I haven't really had a chance to read them myself, and I just wanted to go over what some of these changes are and maybe discuss a little bit what they're going to mean to us going forward playing Phasmophobia. So I'm going to just kind of roll right through these. We've got a few of these to get through. So the first was the big patch. Uh, so we've got some fixes. Fixed a bug where an Oni wouldn't throw objects faster than other ghosts, including poltergeist. Okay. That's not something I found to be too much of an issue, but all right. Fixed an issue where the amount of hunt stats would reset if the host was disconnected. Now, I generally play solo, so again, that one doesn't really phase me at all, or hasn't phased me at all, I should say. Fixed a bug where you would hear your heartbeat when dead. Again, playing solo, once you're dead, game kind of ends, so not, not been a thing for me. Fixed an issue where you could hear the ghost footsteps from far away. All right. I, I have always found that to be strange, that you, you have like this supernatural hearing when that sort of thing to me should be what you would get out of using, like, say, a paramic instead of the paramic being totally useless and you can hear footsteps from the other end of the house sometimes. In the school, fix some areas where the ghost would get stuck inside a wall. Now, I haven't encountered this myself, but I have seen it happen on some other people's uh, streams and videos. So I, I have, I am familiar with that. That's, that's kind of a nice thing. At least a little bug to get fixed. Uh, let's see, fixed a bug where some rooms wouldn't start cold on professional. Hmm. I haven't encountered that. I had I've had plenty of rooms that get cold and then the ghost roams on it it picks a different room to be in but I haven't had it where uh where some rooms are actually warm to start with okay fixed an issue where you could complete the EMF objective during a hunt so I wonder if what they're talking about there is during a hunt your EMF is constantly cycling on and off and you don't even have to be in the house. You'll just get the EMF objective crossed off for that. If you just turn it on in the truck, go inside, do your thing, and there's a hunt, EMF will be crossed off and you never had to do anything for it. I'm I'm betting that's it, but that's something I'll have to test for. Uh, let's see. Fixed a bug where the farmhouse outside foliage of vegetation weren't being fully lit when part of them, okay, when any part of them were lit. So Okay, that's just something graphically, but, you know, who's paying attention to that exactly? Uh, improved how the equipment keys and bone get spawned in to help prevent disconnects and crashes after the start of a game. Uh, and I haven't experienced any of these crashes, so I wonder if that's something to do with multiplayer. Uh, let's see, next up is potential fix for the selected contract sometimes changing on its own when on the main menu. Haven't encountered that. I, honestly, I haven't encountered most of these bugs. I wonder if these more more often than not have to do with multiplayer play. But, alright, moving on. Fix the bug where the equipment wouldn't spawn in even if the host disconnected when loading. Oop, I'm sorry, not even. If the host if the host disconnected when loading again that's going to be multiplayer because if you know you're playing solo and you disconnect nothing else happens you just disconnect okay fixed a bug where the non VR area light wasn't lighting up some objects I'm not entirely sure what that's talking about but I'm wondering if that has anything to do with like books showing up black sometimes I don't think that's the case though. All right, LIV. Oh, I don't have LIV, but potential fix for a bug where the LIV spectator view could not see the other players. So in the fixes section, not a whole lot that's going to pertain to solo players unless you're using the LIV system. All right, here's the big one, though. Changes. Asylum. Increase the size of player icons on the truck map. Oh, that's nice. I've had a hard time spotting the players sometimes when I'm playing on those bigger maps. Prison and school optimizations to specifically improve load times and FPS. Okay. You can no longer click any multiplayer related UI buttons like join, create, etc. on the main menu 
when you are still connecting to the server or a new region. Okay. I don't know that that's... I feel like that should be more of a fix than a change, but okay. Next up, crucifixes will now cause a five second delay in between each hunt attempt after it gets used by the ghost. Okay, so that should make it, I mean, five seconds, not a whole lot of delay, but um, I guess that could slow down the use of crucifixes a little bit if they're getting kind of spam burnt up. All right. Remove the garage and basement keys as they currently have no purpose. Yeah, okay, sure. Sometimes I steal those just because they're there, but yeah, there's no purpose to them. They've been dead for quite some time. Uh, Bleasdale, some minor lighting changes to help with performance. All right. These kind of still seem like fixes, other than the crucifix thing. But, all right. Non-VR area light will now light up the equipment in your hand, which will allow you to see what you are holding in the dark. Now... If that's what I think it is, that's fantastic because I've had so many times where I'm cycling through my inventory in the dark and I went, I go to throw something away and I wind up throwing away uh, my flashlight or something like that as opposed to the, you know, um, what's it called? The EMF reader, things like that. So that, that could be a pretty nice uh, quality of life improvement. I'll have to test that out. B haptics, which I don't have a haptic suit, but remove the footstep haptic effect. More haptics will be added in the future. Okay. That that haptic stuff creeps me out. The thought of being able to feel the ghost touch you and stuff like that. I don't know. I don't know if I want to get into that. Okay. Tanglewood. <clears throat> the garage room has been slightly changed to prevent some exploits. Now, this one I've seen a little bit of, uh, just briefly. I know that they move the lockers, so they're not up against the outside door, so you can't glitch through the lockers and get outside anymore. I've never been able to do that myself, but I've heard that you know that was a thing, so that would be an interesting uh, thing. Just to have that perspective where you're no longer looking straight down through the laundry room, so you don't have that long hallway advantage with the ghost for getting a ghost photo. Um, if that is, it is over to the side now, so I'll have to have to play with that a little bit and see how that affects your ability to get ghost photos and whatnot in that instance. Okay. Oh, okay. So those were changes, but now we've got ghost changes. This is the this is the real the real good stuff right here. So first up, the ghost will no longer move at the start of the hunt in the starting phase. This is to prevent confusion as to when the hunt has actually started. This is huge because the number of times that I have started with the ghost basically spawning on me and as I go to run away, it kind of wanders and it's with me and you don't realize that it's actually sticking right with you and you should probably turn around and go the other way and, and get into something else for safety. Uh, and then once the eight seconds are up, it, it's already wandered with you. So it's already close enough to get you. That is nice. And also, I wonder if that would improve the ability to get a ghost photo at that point. You know, right when the hunt starts, get your ghost photo. <clears throat> the ghost isn't going anywhere, so that gives you a little bit of an advantage for that. Although you're going to spend some of your time to get that ghost photo, but sometimes that's what it takes. Okay, here's, here's a big one. All ghosts, except revenants, will now move increasingly faster over time if they see you during a hunt. The speed will only drop if they can't see you after they have checked your last known location. So what that's going to mean is you not only have to try to break line of sight to keep it from getting any faster, but you have to break it twice. Yes, so it catches up to where it last saw you. You have to have a second LOS break for it to then drop its speed back down to normal speed. So you've got to turn two corners, break line of sight twice, in order to actually get it to drop its speed and not have it run you down. That's that's huge. And that's why I've been kind of avoiding, you know, spending any time learning looping because this is going to kind of do away with that. Now, because of the line of sight causing the speed to drop, if you were to loop and continuously keep breaking line of sight, 
I mean, I guess it's not really looping because it's not really going to follow you that much further, but that would be a way that you could avoid having to hide in a locker or closet. As long as you can keep breaking that line of sight, then, you know, that'll be okay. And also you could do something where, uh, let's say on Tanglewood, you loop around the car, go back in through the house and shut the door to the garage behind you and then shut the door to the kitchen behind you. That would cause two LOS breaks. And then you loop it around the island. I mean, this is this is some dangerous gameplay, but you could then loop it around the island and then go back through the doors and double LOS break it again. And you could, if you're good enough at it, you could keep that loop going without getting it to speed up and run you down. It's probably going to hear you, so it'll be able to keep pace with you. But as long as you keep breaking that line of sight, you should keep it from speeding up. So that's kind of an interesting thing. We may have to test that a little bit. All right, moving on. Ghost now has a chance to slightly open both closet doors at the same time during a hunt. All right, that's that's adding some spookiness to it. Uh, I hate it when it opens one closet door, the ability to knock both of them open. I wonder if that has anything to do with I wonder if that has anything to do with hearing you or if it's just at random it knocks it open. Because I thought part of the change was going to be if it hears you, it's going to throw the doors all the way open. But this is slightly open. So that might just be throwing any closet doors open, uh, doing both of them. So I suspect if you're not holding the doors, that's maybe what it's talking about or just any closet at random. But I don't think that's the... Uh, the really scary one. Let's see if we get that one coming up here. So the ghost now has a 50% chance to remember where it saw you during the last hunt and will search that area in the next hunt. Okay, so that might actually be kind of helpful if you're hiding in a locker. Let's say you're hiding in a basement locker and the ghost comes down, checks you out, and you did a smudge. And on the next hunt, you're trying to get a ghost photo of it or something like that. One of those sorts of things where you want it to come back. And I, I run into this every now and then where I get a couple of hunts in a row and it visits me on the first one and then it never comes back again. And I have to go change lockers or hiding locations and set up somewhere else to get a photo or a smudge. So that might actually improve that. Also, it, you know, it increases your chances of getting killed. If it knows where you were, it might just head to that first. And if you weren't necessarily hiding, but that's where you were doing something, it, it could could prove problematic oh here it is here it is if you keep talking inside a locker or closet and the ghost knows you're in there it will now fully open both the closet or locker doors on its second attempt even if you're grabbing them so no more holding the door shut and just bullying the ghost if you keep talking it's just going to swing that door open and you're done that's that's a big one that one's going to that's a little bit of a problem for a lot of streamers just because, you know, th that's their opportunity to talk to chat is during a hunt. They just sit there and hold the door shut and me, 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 me. Do that now. And say goodbye to your equipment. All right, moving on. Furniture will now block line of sight between you and the ghost. This means that there are now a lot more places you can hide in all maps rather than just closets and lockers. Okay, so I wonder if you can duck down enough to get behind, like, say, a table or uh, a kitchen island, if, if that would be enough to do it. That would be an interesting thing. Of course, in testing that, how do you know that it saw you versus it just roamed over that way in a hunt? But that would be that would be something worth checking out. You know, what can you hide behind? What counts as big enough to block that line of sight? Versus something like, say, a low couch or something that's just not there, even if you're crouched down. So we'll have to definitely test that out in some upcoming videos. Okay, so new. Added player volume controls on the main menu server, which will carry over between games. This is awesome. This is especially awesome when you get somebody that's absolutely got a hot mic and then someone else is dead quiet and you just need to tweak those. You used to have to wait till you were in the game not just out in the lobby to fix that. Now you can deal with that right away. Awesome. 
Added several new hiding places to Grafton and Bleasdale. This is also big. I mean, I, I've always wanted these just because, uh, just because I never really learned how to loop. So these were kind of a terrifying set of maps for me. But with the changes and making looping that much harder, especially even with the whole, you know, break line of sight twice to try to keep the speed down, I don't think there's a lot of opportunity to break it twice as I'm thinking about it. You've got single doors you can go through, but like let's say on Grafton, you would have to be far enough ahead of the ghost to get through the kitchen door, shut it, and then turn another corner. I don't think it's going to get that far behind you, so I think that you absolutely have to have hiding places for those maps. Even with the even with the changes, you're not going to be able to get away with that. That's going to require some smudge sticks and whatnot. So I'm really interested to play those maps and see what to, what those new hiding places look like. Okay, so now this was the changes on the 24th, but it looks like later on that day they came out with a couple more. So let's see what else we've got here. Uh, fixes Grafton a bug fixed a bug where the ghost couldn't enter or exit the nursery room. I don't even know what the nursery room is in Grafton. Uh, well, I guess there's a bedroom that's got a crib in it, but it's also a regular bedroom, I thought. So that must be it. I haven't had any issues with that, though, but I haven't played a lot of Grafton. I've only recently started to get into those farmhouses anyway, so I guess I just haven't encountered that yet. Okay, let's see. Changes. Slightly increase the maximum speed the ghost can get to when chasing you during a hunt because it needs more help. Okay. All right. All right. So made the ghosts even more dangerous and I haven't I haven't even had a chance to play it since the patch comes out. I I know it's been a few days. Uh the patch came out, what is it now? 3 days ago and tonight I'll be actually able to play it for the first time really. Uh, we hopped in it. We did a Tanglewood real quick just to kind of see the lockers change, but we haven't had a chance to get into anything else. So tonight for sure I'm going to be doing a lot of uh a lot of testing <clears throat> probably getting killed an awful lot too just to mess around with everything and see what it's all about but i'm going to be doing a lot of testing of these new changes and see how that affects the game for me okay next up when v-sync is turned off the fps will now be limited to 140 all right so don't cook your gpu that's fine uh the amount of time the ghost stands still at the start of a hunt has been reduced from eight to five seconds okay now, I'm wondering, does that mean that it stands still for five seconds, but you still have eight seconds of grace period? Or did the grace period also get reduced down to five seconds? Which means I'm going to have to stand there and just eat a kill just to find out. But uh, I wonder if after five seconds it can move, but it can't kill you for the full eight. Or did the kill timer start five seconds as well? So we'll have to test that out. Okay, so on the 25th, how many more fixes we got? Oh, wow, there's a bunch. Okay, so on the 25th, came out with another patch. Yep, so the next day. Fixed a bug where the game wouldn't end if all players glitched out of the truck when it was closing. People just love to try to break this game, I swear. Okay, so it's a multiplayer and doesn't really affect me. Fixed a bug where the ghost would keep chasing you after you used a smudge stick during a hunt if you broke line of sight. Oof. All right. Yeah. Glad to hear that's not going to be an issue. I assume that's something that was just recently introduced because I haven't had that be a, be a problem. <clears throat> Pretty sure I haven't had that be a problem. Maybe that's some unexplained deaths I've had. Fixed a bug where the CCTV monitor would freeze if you placed the head-mounted camera back on the holder while it was shown on the monitor. I haven't encountered that, but okay. LIV, potential fix for the in-game player model rendering over your character. All right. And again, I don't use LIV, so that's another non-issue. Uh, fixed a bug where the random chance of the ghost checking the last known player location in the next hunt was not working. So that whole 50% remembering where you were, apparently that wasn't quite working right, but seems like they might have that fixed now. Fixed a bug where all player volumes were being set to the volume of the second player in the player list on the main menu. Okay, so they added in the volume for everybody, but 
I, I kind of heard about this. So I guess when DK was doing the testing on this, he had only had one other person to be testing with. So he had the volumes all checked out, but it was only two people, and that's why this didn't get noticed until later. That's kind of an interesting one. Okay, changes. Increase the maximum distance that you increase the maximum distance. Oh, okay. So they dropped the distance you could hear the footsteps, but now they've increased that back up some. So the maximum distance you can hear is from oh wow, they went down to seven meters to twenty meters now. Okay. That's that's a significant increase too. The volume roll off has also been adjusted. Okay, so yeah, that's that's a problem that I have entirely missed. So I'm not even going to notice that as a difference other than the fact that you can't hear the ghost all throughout the house. Although at 20 meters, 20 meters, it's possible that in a small house, that's still the whole house. I'll have to check that out and see how that tests. Okay, the maximum frame rate when V-Sync is... Okay, so... They dialed it down to 140, and now here they've increased the frame rate to 240 when your V-Sync is turned off. Okay, so if you've got a Psycho Monitor with 240 refresh rate, you can jam all the way on up to that. Okay, slightly increase the volume your microphone needs. <laughs> oh, that sounds like it could have been rough if they needed that. So slightly increase the volume your microphone needs to get the ghost to find you. So... I did see, uh, I was I was watching InSim the other day, and he got into the locker, he thought he was safe, and all he did was go, dead. Soon as he just let out that little sigh, that little huff of relief, Ghost blew the door wide open and just killed him. <laughs> and I remember thinking, wow, I might want to just stand on my mic button, or I'm on my mute button whenever I'm uh, being hunted, if that's going to be the case, so... We'll have to test that out and see what does it take to actually get smoked. How much of a volume? So I'll probably do something like watching my mic, uh, watching the meter, and just see how many uh, how many decibels it takes to set that off. All right, so that was on the 25th. We're still on the 25th. One more quick hot fix. Fixed a bug where all players would get kicked out of the lobby after a game if you had less than four players. Well, that's unfortunate for people. Not for me, because again, solo. But okay. And then the 26th. Okay, so we've got two fixes from yesterday, and then we're up to current. So Edgefield fixed a bug where you could ask the spirit box questions with the light on in the blue and green bedroom. All right, yeah, that that's, shouldn't be a problem, so good. Fixed a bug where the multiplayer UI buttons would become unstable after a game if you were playing offline. Okay, I haven't played it offline. Actually, I'm not entirely sure how you play it offline in multiplayer. So they're talking like LAN if you're playing uh, you know, within your household, maybe? I've, I haven't done any playing offline, so I'm not sure what that would be as far as uh, how that would affect you. Fixed a bug where the selected contract would get desynced if the host left and rejoined the lobby. Oh, well, that's rough. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, changes. Lower the sound of the truck engine when closing the truck door. Yeah, that is that has been kind of obnoxiously loud. So, all right, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Good. And <laughs> last one. Fixed a bug where only hosts could unlock doors. Wow, yeah, that, that shouldn't be a problem. That's definitely something that would have needed to be solved. So, all right, there you guys have it. Those That is the latest list of changes, the new patch, and all of the uh, hot fixes coming out immediately after it. So we haven't seen anything come out today. I'm going to be doing some testing tonight, so I'm going to turn this video right around and just get it posted. Um, just want to make you guys aware, too, that I have a bit of a backlog of videos. So for the rest of this week, at least, the videos that are coming out were all recorded pre-patch, but in general, I also tried to play them as much as possible as if the patch were out, i.e. not trying to bother learning looping. Uh, I'm generally fairly quiet in the lockers anyway, um, so you know it shouldn't be too big of a, a noticeable difference, but those were all shot pre-patch, so the rules don't apply yet. So just kind of be patient, because I'm sure getting massacred is going to be coming up soon. 
So again, tonight I'm going to be doing some testing of that. If you guys get a chance, check out the stream at twitch.tv slash underscore TTV. And we'll see you guys there.